everyone, my name is David and I'm coming at you guys with a brand new LEGO Ninjago video and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing episode 81 known as Game of Masks. Honestly guys, it's episodes like these that make me proud to be a Ninjago fan. I was pleasantly surprised with how good it really was and it was great discovering Harumi's intentions and backstory in the opening scene. The pacing was really well done in this episode and the soundtrack used in each scene made it even more emotional. Everything here was exceptionally done. This episode really does step it up in terms of story and is by far the best episode from the Sons of Garbanon season at this point. I can't wait for the continuation of the season as the writers have skillfully demonstrated their capability of creating not only such an entertaining but interesting story that is truly unique from other seasons. So let's get on to the good. As I've already mentioned, the pacing is really well done and the writers have allotted just the right amount of time for each scene. This episode is jam packed with a ton of incredible and memorable scenes and this episode definitely stands out from most other Ninjago episodes. The story gets pushed so much higher in this episode and Harumi's backstory was something that I personally did not expect and the whole flashback scene came as such a surprise to me. It has got to be one of my favorite Ninjago scenes ever, but I'll get more into that later on in this review. However, I will say I love how we're learning more perspectives towards the vast amount of pain and destruction that the Great Devourer has caused. The way the new voice actor Sam Vincent portrays Lloyd is excellent and he provides such emotion for the character and I'm starting to love Lloyd more and more as he's starting to become my favorite ninja. The dynamic between Harumi and Lloyd is also very interesting as Lloyd has fallen in love with a girl who only seeks to harm him and seek revenge. This episode has so many things going for it so let's talk about my favorite scenes in detail. So the first scene that I want to bring up is the opening to the episode where we are introduced to Harumi's backstory. Her backstory is so simple yet works so well and is such a clever idea that I never thought of. The writers have outdone themselves with this villain. I love the concept of Harumi as she's this crazy in the head girl who's been traumatized from a terrible experience in her life that connects so well with what's going on and I'm surprised at how deep and impactful her story is. My favorite part of this scene was towards the end when we have medical responders arrive at the scene to help out Harumi after the wreckage of the devourers caused and Harumi is completely silent so one of the responders says well aren't you the quiet one it was such a brilliant line that sent chills down my spine and I adored it. The next scene that I wanted to discuss is actually a combination of multiple scenes within the Oni Temple. I found it really interesting to see how Harumi was using Loi to solve all the traps within the temple in order to acquire the mask. Another great scene that follows is the retrieval of the Oni Mask of Hatred where Lloyd finally puts the pieces together and realizes that Harumi is the quiet one and was using Lloyd all along. We then get to see the sick and twisted side of Harumi as she reveals the monster that she really is and informs Lloyd of all the pain she intends on inflicting upon him, just like he had to her a few years before. It was incredibly done and that entire scene was full of suspense, shock, and most importantly a moment that I'm sure all Ninjago fans were waiting for. The final scene I wanted to discuss is the sea monster attack scene. It's my least favorite one from the ones that I've mentioned so far, but it is still really good for what it was. It was an entertaining battle to witness and it served as a distraction for the Sons of Garmanon to escape and for Lloyd to be captured. Honestly, it's really hard to pick out what I don't like in this episode since there's barely anything, but I do have a few nitpicks. There is one line that was sort of cringy that came from Ultraviolet and she said, it's a good thing the quiet one isn't a bad guy, but a bad girl. I personally cringed when I heard it since that's completely unnecessary, but whatever, I'll let it slide. Additionally, towards the end, when Lloyd needs a boost to get on board the bounty when the Sons of Garmanon are flying away, why doesn't he just use Air Jitsu to get on board? Or his Elemental Dragon? Have we forgotten about those things? Why does he need Zane and Nia to use their Elemental powers to boost him up to the bounty? I mean, these are all just nitpicks, so they don't really matter as much, and the episode was still really good regardless, so I'll let these slide just this once. And now, onto the characters. I do want to discuss two characters from this episode, which I'm assuming you guys have already guessed, are Harumi and Lloyd. Let's start off with Harumi. In all honesty, I've grown to hate this character in a good way. The way an antagonist should be hated, and the writers have done an incredible job creating a character whose motivations are twisted, but yet justifiable in some aspects. Harumi is an incredibly interesting character and I want to see much more from this evil side of her. As for Lloyd, I'm glad he put the pieces together and 
realized Harumi was the quiet one. But I do have to say, if he realized she was the quiet one from her statement to him about Oni Blood, why did he retrieve the mask in the first place? Why couldn't he just hesitate and not retrieve the mask and question her then? It was pretty foolish of him, but I understand why that needed to be done from a story perspective. I'm really starting to love the character more and more, and I think this is a great job done by the writers. Overall, this episode has a ton to offer, and I'm so glad Ninjago is back on top with an incredible episode that many were shocked by as they're now realizing the true potential that the Ninjago story has. I can definitely see myself watching this episode multiple times in the future, and it's really entertaining throughout its entirety. With this all being said, Ninjago episode 81 is the first episode from the season that is going to receive a 10 out of 10. It's definitely an episode that you should watch whenever you have the time and it won't be disappointing. That pretty much does it for my review on Ninjago episode 81, Game of Masks. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree with my opinion. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like and subscribe for more LEGO Ninjago videos coming guys each and every day. And hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, guys.